What's up, everybody? This is Enlightened Masculinity Podcast. I'm your host, Yogi Chris, PhD, wearing my super dope Mortal Kombat shirt, who I cross paths with somebody in the street wearing the exact same shirt. So I guess we shop at the same place. This is a red pill show, red pill of all red pills, and a documentation, biography, a testimony to my teacher, Arash Pardibazar, who I live with right next door. And my Instagram cut out again. That's odd. But we are persistent. It's a male quality. Females can have it too, but it's a male quality. It's admired. Actually, it's admired in both. But in the mating game, actually, it's still admired in both. Zoom. Uh, link in the bio. So it's actually just a good human quality. Everything probably in the right context could be admired in both. Like we could even say the man is soft, but in the right context, like in when, you know, she's emotionally hurt or something. He's like, I don't know. Probably that's just more of a female quality. It's hard to say that that's for both. So persistence, I think, is more of a male quality. Adrian, what's up? So this show is about handling suppressive people. And what is that? And I know Matthew T is reading ethics, Scientology ethics. I'm, uh, you know, Aaron Hubbard. Probably some other guys had the book open and I highly recommend it. Now, I'm not a Scientologist and I'm not uh, trying to teach what L. Ron Hubbard taught necessarily. It's what came to mind in my life. I use that vocabulary regularly and it's uh, part of my filter of the world of my interactions with people, especially. Um, and so we'll just get into it. The subtle nature of communication, meaning what? Meaning, uh, whew, my mind is kind of going backwards into a bunch of like, you know, bigger awareness that uh, maybe should be given on the subject. Let's just say like your body language communicates something, how you move, how you walk communicates something, how you sit. How, how you dress communicates something, how you smell communicates something. And, you know, I'll, I'll end it there. I could keep going and I could make it so that you integrate much more of your machine. That's what the silent flute is for. So join the silent flute for that. And if you're an apprentice, you get to join the silent flute. So take advantage of that. You're missing things that aren't said in AZD lectures that I'm saying that are just part of this journey that I've learned from him. And maybe he said it in the past, but go find it. You know, but so all of these you're communicating right now, and um, so so is punching someone in the face is a communication, kicking them in the knee. So is uh, walking away from a game of basketball. They just walk away from a game of twenty one, or a game of darts, or a video game. They just walk away mid game. It's a communication, but it's subtle because it wasn't as overt. It wasn't as physical as a punch in the face and the kick in the knee. And then on onwards, all of these communications are subtle. They're not a physical thing happening to us. We're perceiving something and feeling it. And it's a transmission of something, some information from the other person, un both unintentional and intentional information conveyed. And when you, you know, so, and then of course, words, right? Talking. And so you say something and they disagree. They say something and they cut it down. Or they say something and they build it up or they praise, they compliment, they show interest. Suppressive people, that's like kind of the norm of the culture. That's the baseline. People are suppressive. They've learned to be suppressive. And, you know, human history and going back and seeing, you know, the agenda of the elites or the people, the ruling classes that put forth the publications when publication was not easy, that spread the word, that owned the priests, that they controlled what the information that everybody grew up with generation after generation after generation. And then we start to see the world and see life through how they programmed us. And so that's great. I don't know what we're going to do about that directly, like go knock on the door of some elites and be like, hey, cut it out. It's going to trickle down. It's going to take time. And really, you need to free yourself first, because even if you fix that, it would take generations for, you know, more 
natural behaviors, which would, there would be a lot of anarchy in the process. So I'm not saying to do that, but, uh, you know, it's, you must free yourself is the solution basically. And I think one of the first ingredients, I don't know if it's the first, is being able to handle suppressive people in your environment, wherever you find that your environment could be here on this podcast right now. This is our environment with each other, your environment at work, your environment at home, obviously more personal, physical environments. And this balance of what to handle, what not, what to let go, what's important, what's not, what's, uh, you know, the person at the grocery store may not be in your circle. And so there may be, say something suppressive, you say something to cut it down for some reason you're in line and you, uh, you know, talk about how great the, the yoga is or whatever. And they're like, they, I don't know, they say some dumb shit. Like it's like, I'm just commenting on the yoga magazine and they'll say, this hasn't happened. I'm just like making it up. They say, you know, uh, I don't know why they would, but they would say, I don't know, this isn't the most realistic example. Um, but they might say, you, you know, yoga doesn't work or yoga's for the birds. Yo yoga, that new age stuff isn't, you know, American exercise is better or whatever, which I might even agree with, <laughs> which I don't necessarily, I do and don't. I think the Western science really, that's what I use. Anatomy, physiology, that's Western stuff. Kinesiology, immunology, you know. And I just use it with those Eastern movements and their philosophy on movement and whatever. And uh, so that could be suppressed. Maybe you don't need to handle that. Maybe you do. How you handle it's going to influence how you feel about yourself moving forward. If you handle, if they say, you know, yoga sucks and you just take it on the chin, maybe, you know, it depends on how you take it. From the outside, it might be you turn and you didn't really absorb what they said. You were unaffected. You were like, internally, you were like, that, that jackass, you even talking to me. I think you'll still feel something later because even to say that, you feel what you're saying. It's going to be very difficult to just like be a clear vessel and his words go through you and you have no response because that would basically be, you have to be like blind to your environment. And it's maybe a low ethic because that might work for you, but what if you have a kid or a wife or a, a tribal member or somebody in your family, a friend, like, they would feel less also for you and about themselves because they're part of your group and you were just made less by someone else in the environment in a way that was unjust. So how you handle it will influence how they feel about you, themselves, their, their alliance with you, their group with you. So being by yourself, it's easy to have to let things go and not uh, respond to them. And people form those behaviors of a, a kind of a weak spirituality where they don't let anything get to them, but that's because they don't have responsibility for anything either. So not handling their environment and the suppressive communication towards them and the reputation that's built from that, not handling that has very low consequence because they're not responsible for anything. But if you have a lot of responsibility over business, family, other people's well-being, this and that. If your state of mind really matters, see, that's the thing that the, the lonely peasant culturally, like I don't mean peasant monetarily, I mean peasant like in their mind and in their heart, they don't respect themselves and they communicate in ways that's keeping them down. The victim, they, uh, what was I going to say? They would say, um, well, they would say something like, I kind of forget where I was going, but they would say something like, you know, why they don't have responsibility over those things or why they're evil in either having those responsibilities or there's evil in why they don't have those responsibilities wasn't given to them. They'll have some reasons for that. And the, a lot of the reason is that they don't handle suppressive communication in their environment. They don't handle suppressive communication to them. And they're unaware, of course, that they are very suppressive to other people. That's just how they communicate. They're in that level of the matrix of language where they're just being held down by those word exchanges and how it feels. And the feelings is what impulses, it moves the body to move, makes it move or not move. Code of language is directly linked to the code of emotions, the, the, the palette of emotions, the color wheel of emotions. And you know that's related to just so many of your habits, which then has this all feedback effect because how you feel in, in your habits is gonna be your decisions and how you interact and how you communicate, that's out of habit. So it just keeps you in these grooves of beingness, your persona. 
and it's handling suppressives. So how just even having the concept of handling, you handle, you got to handle it and confronting communication that is not comfortable to confront. But when you handle it, you feel much better. And if you don't handle it so well, because there's probably concern, like I'm not going to handle it well, I'm going to go off on the person or I'm going to, uh, you know, maybe you might even have the idea of some violence will happen. And that's confronting the situation. The truth is violence probably won't happen. If you're a girl and you're going to confront a guy, you should be aware of what you're about to confront about because that's in his nature. You're counting on him to hold back his nature if he gets angry. And I guess we do that for all people. I do that. Guys do that with guys too. And that's why it would be much scarier to confront a big mean looking guy that's not in your tribe versus a big mean looking guy that's in your tribe. Even if you're both angry in both situations, the guy in your tribe, you have a little more expectations of him, depending on maybe is standing in the tribe how long he's been in it what's whatever your group or your circle of friends are and but these ideas of confronting the situation of handling it a lot of times with people close to you i don't know what percentage of times half let's say they are not intending to be suppressive that's just how they communicate and they are communicating that way because they have lack of understanding and so do you you have lack of understanding about their lack of understanding. At the very least, you're lacking understanding and how much they're lacking in understanding. And that's the plight of the leader. The leader, eventually, when he loses the follower or has a problem with the follower, you know, the man, when he has a problem with the woman and he's the leader, eventually, he'll realize it was my failure of leadership. Either she was bad, a bad person, and you have misjudgment, you got in a relationship with bad, and that's the devastation of that. Like, man, my judgment's off. Where else am I off? Or, and or, there's probably a mixture. The, the mixture that she's a bad person? Yeah, she's like, well, no, okay. Uh, no, she's probably not a bad person. But she's stuck in bad personalities. Stuck in these incidents and, and these toxic ways of communicating, whoever she is. From the beginning to the end, it's not just at the end of a relationship when you're fighting. I mean, from the beginning, when you're meeting a girl, she's communicating in suppressive ways and she's stuck in incidents in her mind. She, chances are she's not some super relaxed Buddha chick that easily recognizes when her mind kicks up and when her emotions are getting in the way of her decisions. And, yet, and she's also blissed out, really enjoying life. And uh, no. I don't see any of those. I'm sure they exist, but that's a different thing. And maybe my ideal is even off. I don't know. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is the concept of handlings was very transformative for you. Oh, for me. <laughs> for you. <laughs> it's like a command. For you, it's very transformative. Uh, handling, like, um, okay, so uh, here's a box of nails. I drop it. It splatters. Handle it put it back in. Okay. Uh, I accidentally paper cut my finger, handle it, go and, you know, alcohol bandaid over it. Uh, I'm hungry, handle it, go make a sandwich. I'm thirsty, handle it, grab a drink. I'm tired, handle it, take a nap. That person said this to me, handle it. Okay. You can handle it by taking a nap, drinking some coffee, smoking a cigarette, or handle it with communication with them. Handle them. Handle that communication line between you two. How? Well, that's the art and science of communication. What are you going to say? What did they say? With examples, I, I can give you some. I don't want to just like think of them for the show, me teaching you. That's more silent flute. I'm saying things and I am teaching you. And I'm teaching you, let's see, who do we have on? Son of Babylon, Matthew Powerhouse, Prophet, Lone Wolf, My Girl Cat, Zay, Tyler, Powell, TK, Master Apprentice TK, who's responsible for posting all these shows. So if you enjoy these shows, you guys can thank him. And uh, Real Fam and DC. We got people online on all the apps that we're on, except Clubhouse. Nobody's live on Clubhouse, but that's fine. It's there. We're broadcasting YouTube, Instagram. You all should be on the camp, except for my girl. And any girls listening to this, you should be on silent flute. All the guys should be on gateless gate. You should make payments. 
You should put money down. The art of communication will save your life. It'll save your life from being smashed under a mountain of mud and bullshit that people give you. Your ability to communicate, you are just growing more and more distant from people and more and more critical of how other people are wrong and you're right. That's what happened. And or you become some cheeseball salesman that gets along with a bunch of people, but it's not deep. And you'll eventually have a crisis or you'll come to this information. What's up, Ali Sabat? Join the gateless gate. That's what, that's what we do here. That's why this show isn't bigger. If I wasn't as pushy as a salesman, everybody would come because the information is great. I could just give it all away, but that's not what I do. How can I be likable? How I can be likable? Question mark. Okay, where are you from to others? Where are you from? It depends on who others is because I don't want to be likable to everybody. But if you're just talking about being like polite and good etiquette and like being in the world and people aren't like coming at you just from people. Oh, yeah, Bahrain. Well, I don't know what the culture is there. But I don't think it should be too difficult to walk around with a smile, with good posture, smelling good, looking good, just sharp, you know, clothes that fit, be clean, groomed, and whatever the culture's grooming is there. And if you just do that with a smile, like, it's going to be hard to hate you at the, at the beginning. And then, you know, how you communicate with people respectfully, with interest, this and that. You know, being likable, but it's likable to who? And as you engage more and more with the world, you'll see the kinds of people. You start to recognize these patterns. I'm astounded that people, astounded that uh, people at like 19 and 20, like DC, that they're studying the information, investing in studying the information, because I wasn't mature enough to recognize patterns that made it important enough to me. I had to see enough patterns in life where I was uh, failing myself and how I was communicating and how I was feeling each day and just growing unsatisfied because recognizing the pattern, recognizing that there's times I feel good, there's times I feel bad, there's other people that feel different. And why is this not under my control? Enough times I would have to try to, to make, make it right and I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how, it wouldn't go right. In relationships, getting the girl, you start trying to get the girl and you... And if you fail, you start eventually, hopefully, I mean, I guess some people don't, they either turn super critical because of how the girl is responding is suppressive to his advances. That's the game. She's not supposed to accept every advance. Could you imagine what the world would be like if every girl accepted every advance from every guy? Of course not. So she's got to make decisions. And she's made decisions habitually. So she doesn't think about them anymore. But then you go away feeling worse. How do you handle every piece of the puzzle? They give you this. What? Okay, so here it is. So add these two numbers to make 10. You have to guess the second number. I'm going to give you the first number. You got a result, add them together to make 10. Okay, the first number is one. Okay, the second number is nine. Okay, what's the, what's the second number? Now your turn. Three is the first number. Okay, so you know the second number is seven. Okay, so what if I give you negative four? Okay, so 14 is the second. What if I give you 470? So you do negative 460 or whatever. And they add together to make 10. Whatever the person gives you, give them something back. The, the handling that gets the result that you want. And at some point you make a decision. The result is I want that person to get the fuck away from me. Like Matthew was saying on last podcast or whatever. Or sometimes the answer is this or that. Like you make a decision. And when you get in ethics, and so when you join the camp, you'll get frames on game. This is, I just described like a very simple analogy, a man and a woman, but like game on higher levels of the venue, of the community, the family, of the, her friends, different, you know, different levels of this thing, because the perception from the outside of you, it's not that it's so important by itself, like another person's opinion. It's that people are social animals, tribal animals, and there's behaviors that result in better survival in the tribe than in lo versus lower survival in the tribe high survival activities low survival activities and the tribe could be 10 people it could be a thousand people it could be all of 
America. All of the world would be like the species of man. But the, like, so there's level of ethics describes the survival level of this. So if you're going to, but then game, you might think, well, multiple relationships, that's low survival because why? Like, or it's unethical. A girl might try to say that's unethical. Why is that unethical? Why is that low survival? Because it makes me feel bad. And then, then okay, well, if you feel bad, then it's not for you. Why do you feel bad? Because I think you're going to leave me because you're going to find a better girl and you're going to stop caring and, and I'm going to be left like used up and older and this and that. Okay. That's a legitimate reason. I get that. What are your options? <laughs> what are your options here? What are you going to do differently, better? You got a guy that's going to lie or this, like, so it's just when you go into it and you, because her suppressive reactions to you, suppressing your will and your, what you do is the result of like suppressive communication that's come on her, but it's also the result of not understanding. Chris, should I add kindness to other people in my workplace? Is that a real question? Word it better. That can't be your real question. That's not a real question. Everybody, that's not a real question. So you need to work out that question better because if you look at that question, that's just, it's a better use of my time to harangue you about that question than it is for me to answer it because people need to see that this is not a good question. Now, you may be trying real, real hard. So if you are, then try harder. Go write it out a little better because just look at that question. Is You asked me a yes or no question and just look at that. And so ethics, let's say my game, my game when it comes to podcasting, what if I said to him, no, he says, it's kind of, should I show kindness in the workplace to my uh, coworkers? And I say, no. And everybody takes on that idea. Then everybody starts acting unfriendly to their coworkers and the world gets worse. So it's a low ethic idea. What if I say yes? Okay. Then everybody that's listening, they start acting good to their coworkers. And if their coworkers are assholes, then they feel worse about themselves. They took some wrong advice. It was low ethic also, but probably better than saying no. It was higher ethic, but maybe not totally ethical. But maybe there's a lack of understanding between me and Ali. So I don't want to be suppressive to Ali. So let me say in English, maybe your question is something like, what attitude should I have towards my coworkers? So that's more open-ended. It, it makes the possibility for not just yes or no. What if, what if Yogi Chris, the host, went to Ali and his question, he was like, what are you really asking? And started giving Ali some coaching. Well, then everybody would be like, I want some coaching. Or they'd be like, am I showing up just for some, watch him coaching? I already pay for it. Like, I want to be entertained. They're showing up because they want to be entertained and educated. This is very entertaining and educational for them. So it's for the benefit of all of the people that I care about. What if, what if Matt had some opinion that he, he wanted to hear the coaching, but he didn't want to be entertained? And I started catering to Matt. That might diminish other people's audience. What if uh, I cater to everybody else and Matt can you know, leave? He doesn't have to pay attention. Okay, so it depends on how much I care about Matt's opinion or Prophet's opinion or Son of Babylon's opinion. In the end, in the end of all ends, you die and you're stuck with your opinion about yourself. And so part of that is going to be how you treated the people around you, how you cared about them, how you valued them, yes or no, less or more. And then, yeah, there's, there's this aspect of how you conducted yourself, but that's always, I think, going to be in relation. I mean, I guess you could be out of survivalist in nature and like not be interacting with people and there's still like how you conduct yourself. But the, unless you were born in that environment and somehow Tarzaned out and you didn't, like you probably left society to go do that. So you're still stuck with how you communicated with people. The reason why they leave and go out there, they couldn't handle their community. It'd be better to just be around people and have a big plot of land and do that survival stuff. But because you, life would be better with people, with, good, with the kind of communication that you want. So you're definitely still stuck with in those last moments, how you handled your communications. And so knowledge of cause and effect and how you're going to feel about how a certain conversation went down, how you're going to feel about the result of that conversation in the other person and, and people, your reputation, but reputation to who? If you're running for president, maybe you care about your reputation for, with everybody or with half the population or whatever. If you're not, maybe you have a smaller movement, something that's more esoteric, more edgy, like IMC Nation. And your reputation depends only on the men in IMC Nation and not even the newbies. Their rank matters. Their investment matters. Their participation matters. 
And if they have low rank, low participation, low investment, their opinion doesn't matter. Because what's the consequence? They leave and, and go talk shit, talk hate about the group. They didn't make it far. It's more, it's more harmful for a high ranking person to leave and talk shit and, and spread hate. Now that's really more invalidating. In this, in this nation, it wouldn't be that invalidating. Maybe if half the people left or something. And then even then, that's happened before. That's what happened when the beast process came out. And that, or process of the beast, AZD's process of the beast, which is two years ago. I can see how people would think the beast process is like some satanic thing when I say it. It's not. I don't know how many people are listening to this recording. Last month was the most successful month. 3,000 view, uh, downloads, views. I forget which one for the podcast. So we're over 30K now, 30K views, everybody. So go and uh, TK post the link and uh, the Telegram group, leave a review on the show. Maybe that helps. I think actually your ranking as a podcast depends on new subscribers per week or something. It's new subscribers per day or whatever. So my idea was actually to change the show at some point. I'm recycling a bunch of episodes and then I was just going to rename the show after I recycled all these episodes. It's on my schedule, by the way, uh, by the way TK. Today, it's on my schedule to start that process. And it's going to be like a two-hour process. Uh, I was going to rename the show Enlightened Masculinity to IMC Radio. But then Tony or Trent, Trent Lara came in and decided to name his IMC TV show IMC Radio. He said he didn't hear it on my podcast. And so that's fine. So he can do that. Zothi's in the house. Everybody should be on Gateless Gate this month. That's the way to go. All right. Um, so yeah, the workplace, I would just ask respectfully. I don't know what your workplace is. I got with a bunch of girls when I was working at the University of Florida office. Uh, I don't think it was necessarily kindness that got them. I had a really good friend that got really into yoga. He ended up being suppressive on IMC, but he listened to some Arash stuff with me uh, in the beginning there. And we had a lot of fun, you know, in life. And, uh, you know, I don't think I got him by kindness. I got him through being a badass. He was too kind. Uh, too kind, right? What would that be? Maybe there's better words to describe it. Too kind, like nice, too uh, forgiving, too uh, unable to handle, too irresponsible with your communication lines and being suppressed, basically. So what do you do about suppression? And we just keep talking about it as you handle it. You find the handlings, the right ways of communicating that set your boundaries, that give space, that transmit understanding, that solicits understanding, pulls understanding. If they don't understand why you're part of IMC Nation, make them understand. Why is it important to you? What are the benefits? What are you getting? What that you're not getting out there? Explain everything. They're going to keep coming back with suppressive communication, but if, if you think that they mean good and they stay in it, it's sometimes useful to sprinkle in that they're being suppressive, that they're being passive aggressive, that they're being nasty, that they're being bad communicators and making it hard to communicate with them. You don't want to keep doing that because you are too, to some degree. You're just way, way better than them. You're leading them. So you could sprinkle some of that in, like correcting their communication, but that should really just be sprinkled. Get that word means a little bit. Most of it is just handling how they talk to you in a cheerful way, unaffected or seemingly unaffected. Obviously, you're affected because you're hearing it and it's, you're handling it. So there's some effect that's taking place. But it's not going to drop you down. There's ways to do that, ways you visualize yourself, how you see yourself. Knowledge of cause and effect, why they're being that way. Maybe the traumas or the abuses or the things that they've been through. You don't want to keep doing that. Keeping that in mind forever just lets you be victimized by their suppressive communication because you're telling yourself because they were victimized. That's just a victim mindset. They shouldn't be babied. But understanding, if you understood what they had been through, would you be more understanding in the moment right now? probably, but you would also have your threshold. You would come in almost as father figure, correcting the situation in a way with compassion. Even with mom and dad, if you knew what mom went through, knowing what girls go through today, of course, it wasn't the same, but knowing in some ways it was worse because there wasn't 
you know, emergency phones. There wasn't cell phones. There wasn't, there was, you know, maybe be a little bit more understanding of her suppressive communication. So you, you just, you know, joining that boys club and not, not handling your life. You should, you should, they, she probably wouldn't use word like that, but you, uh, you know, not finishing your school and getting a job and getting a house and getting a wife. You just want to be out there and, and be this, that, and she just lacks understanding. Now you don't have to convince her like you would, let's say, if you have a second girlfriend that's coming into the picture, she needs to be, she needs to understand thoroughly, whatever she needs to understand. You don't need to tell her game necessarily, but you tell her a lot of the, you know, game would be like your strategies behind why you're doing what you're doing versus telling her evolutionary psychology or telling her, you know, social dynamics or whatever. You can give her the understandings of how you understand men and women and being in venues and being in the world and, you know, public opinion and this and that. You don't have to tell her why you said this to her or that to him or whatever. Uh, that gets sprinkled in also. But she needs a lot of understanding of that it's higher value. It's higher survival for her being with you. And yeah, your wisdom plays a lot to do with it. Arguably, it plays all to do with it, but also arguably, it's not all to do with it. Why is it not all to do with it? Because your understanding alone, you could just write the words on a paper and that's not going to convince her. It's how you communicate it to her. So there's a how here that's also 100% necessary. They're both necessary, 100%. And so that's, you know, the art of communicating. Speaking, speaking of second girl, huh, that's all she gets because she's not on Zoom. And, uh, but she's there. So welcome. Welcome to the stream. I'm about to end the stream. It's 1044. 11 a.m. today is the gathering. And I'll read to you here some things that I've learned from the gathering. This was an email that uh, I sent to myself. Actually, I don't see it. Well, anyway, I don't want to tell you what I've learned from me. I, on Silent Flute, I'm going to teach what I learned from the gathering. I'm going to explain these bullet points. So if you're on the newsletter, go and look at those bullet points. And if you've been listening to those lectures, maybe that will help you recall ways to identify what people are bragging about, ways to identify what people want to be admired about, ways to reword your compliments. ways to pull out of the ether the kind of person that you want to interact with not out of nowhere out of the person right in front of you out of them you pull out the kind of person that you would want to interact with how by influence by persuasion by mind control or by surrendering and understanding how to communicate They're not in your control, but how you communicate is in your control. Seven plus three equals 10. Are you the three? Are you the seven? What do they give you? What do you give back? Handling suppressive communication, very important for your state of mind. And if you want to be responsible for people and move up in life, then you'd want to be responsible for people. You'll need to handle the suppression that's keeping you down, keeping you emotionally down, not expressive enough, not enthusiastic enough, not happy enough, not energized enough, not eager enough to communicate. Why aren't you at the level that you know you can be when you see it in me, when you see it in IMC guys, when you see it in Arash, of course. It's not calculus. This isn't quantum physics. This is arithmetic. Handle your arithmetic like pluses and minuses and times and divides. Handle your communication lines. Handle who, what's bringing you down. Transmit the understanding and decide at some point. That person doesn't want to understand. You can ask them, are you trying to understand me? I'm trying to understand you and try to understand them also. At some point, you measure your life. So if 300 guys depend on me, I can't spend 10 hours 
trying to understand someone. At some point, you're not valuing my time. This isn't just my time you're taking. You're taking the whole nation's time. What don't you understand? Here's a recording. Watch this recording. I've already talked about it 20 times. And you'll do a lot better. So you'll end up cutting off a lot of people in the beginning. You'll get better at handling people so that you don't have to cut them off. Because that's the other, that's the alternative. You cut them off. Handle, or disconnect. First discover, then handle, or disconnect. Discover, discover if they're suppressing you. Discover if you feel worse talking to that person for some reason. You want to talk to them, but then you always come away feeling worse. Okay, handle that. Look inwards, find it. I don't know, write it out, figure it out. Think about it for just a second. And then what could be said? And if you're finding it's such a struggle to figure out what could be said, then I recommend the silent flute for guys and girls, especially the girls, because you can't do the dragon's lair or the gateless gate if you're a girl. So the guys join the gateless gate. If you're, you're probably already on dragon's lair and that's entry level stuff, that's talking inspirational stuff. And of course there's techniques thrown in it. Just like I threw techniques in this. I, it's impossible not to talk techniques as I do this. What would I talk about? I'd have to do like basic normie language to not, I mean, you'd at least learn some words just coming and showing up. So guys should join the gateless gate. Yeah, it's $697 online. The techniques, you can listen to them over and over. It will change your life. And as it changes your life immediately, it'll change your life in a compound way. Next month, next month, next year, next year. You'll get an edge on the people around you, which you should want if you're a good person. Because if they're good people, then you'll take care of them. If they're not good people, then you'll be stronger. You want the edge over people antagonistic, meaning opposed to, meaning against your life. All right, so that's at imcbase1.com. I-M-C-B-A-S-E-O-N-E dot C-O-M. imcbase1.com. And this is Enlightened Masculinity. Leave a review on the show, on all the apps. It's on Apple, it's on Spotify, it's on Pandora, it's everywhere. Thanks everyone who attended live. Shout out TK, Master Apprentice, posting all these episodes. And I'll see you uh, the next one. I announce them in my Telegram group. Namaste. Awesome.